We're almost ready. We need to test levels or... Hey! hey. Nice mountain bike, dude! What? Nice nice mountain bike. No, no, it's a gravel bike. Gra gravel bikes are just 90s mountain bikes, man. <laughs> oh, fr fresh take, dude. I've, I've n never heard that one before. No, seriously. It Look, it's a 90s mountain bike. What? Dude, dude, dude we're, we're trying to do something here. No, seriously, look, it's a 90s mountain bike, dude. Oh, shit. Hey, I'm Bruce from the Pro's Closet, and today I'm giving you the breakdown on this 2019 Cannondale Slate. Now the Cannondale Slate is obviously a pretty funky looking bike. The first thing most people notice is Cannondale's trademark single-sided lefty fork, which is pretty cool, but we're actually gonna talk about that later. First, what I actually wanna do is get a real 90s mountain bike and hold it side by side with the Slate. The idea that gravel bikes are basically rehashing the tech of old mountain bikes is pretty cliche at this point. But when you see these two bikes side by side, you kind of get what people are talking about. But what I want to say is that the Slate is so much more than a reimagined vintage bike. As a gravel bike, it was so far ahead of its time, so innovative, so outrageous that I think it had a major influence on the modern landscape of gravel cycling. Allow me to take you back to 2015. We're at probably one of the most talked about bikes for 2015 coming out of Cannondale's design studios. This is the Slate. Now it doesn't seem that long ago, but gravel cycling was still a pretty new genre. People who were riding gravel, like me, we were doing it on cyclocross bikes mostly. And people kind of didn't know what a gravel bike needed to be. Now, Cannondale, they have a long history of innovation. They love making weird, weird bikes. So when they were gonna bring out their first gravel bike, you knew it was gonna be something different. And compared to the really sort of tame gravel bikes that existed back then, the slate was absolutely bonkers. Cannondale released these like teaser videos featuring Tim Johnson, one of their pro cyclocross riders, absolutely shredding on this bike pavement, gravel, single track trails, anything. And the bike industry didn't really know what to make of it. Was it an adventure bike? An all road bike? I heard one reviewer call it a Narmac bike. Kind of sad that it didn't stick around, but definitely the slate was an oddity. But then in 2016, lightning struck. One of Cannondale's former pro roadies, Ted King, took the slate to Unbound Gravel in Kansas, and he won. Now, back then, it was known by a different name, but it was, and still is, the biggest gravel race in the world. And it really showed that the slate was a great gravel race bike. Then the next year, Allison Tetrick backed this up with another win on the slate. After that, gravel bike makers and gravel riders really started to think what features a gravel bike really needed and the Slate introduced two interesting ones that I think were super important to the story of gravel. The first is this Lefty Oliver suspension fork. So the Lefty is a Cannondale icon. Basically, the air spring and the damper are contained in the same fork leg, which gives you this single-sided design. It has, you know, it's upside down and it uses needle bearings instead of bushings like a traditional fork. So it's actually a lot more rigid and it has a lot less stiction, so it's more plush. This is the Lefty Oliver. It's based on the Lefty PBR Carbon mountain bike fork. It has this carbon body and the travel has been reduced to 30 millimeters for gravel applications, which I think is why they call it the Oliver. Because when it comes to travel, it's like, Please, sir, I want some more. Please, sir, I want some more. But, you know, 30 millimeters, it keeps things efficient, and the damping is actually tuned so the fork bobs less while you're pedaling, and it's just enough to take the edge off rough roads, bumps, square edges, whatever. Yeah, this is pretty nice. The front end definitely makes things more cushy. And when you're pedaling, this bike, while seated, you actually don't notice the fork, even on glass smooth pavement. 
It's only when you stand up and really hammer, it does dive and bob. And I don't have a problem with that, but some riders might, which is why it has this PBR lockout button on the top of the fork. It's pretty easy to use, easily accessible, just push it and it locks out the fork so it's hard as a rock. You can hammer, hammer, and then when it's time to shred the gnar and you wanna open it up again, you press this red ring on the outside and it's open again. It is nice to be able to lock out this fork so easily. You know how to push it a button, it's there it's open. Now it's locked out. Pretty cool. Now this first generation Lefty Oliver, it wasn't perfect, it uses this dual crown design and actually when it gets wild I kind of smack my knee into it sometimes and it uses a full one and a half inch steerer so your stem options are pretty limited. Um, really you're stuck with Cannondale stems and I think Thompson makes some also. To remove the front wheel because you have this disc rotor you actually have to remove the caliper too. You got these two bolts that keep it you know sort of in the same spot but I've had to readjust it every time I remove the front wheel, which is kind of annoying. It's not an issue on the newer ones, but with this first generation, it's something to think about. What's more important is what this fork accomplished though. So adding suspension to drop bar bikes, it's not a new idea, but it kind of fizzled out after the 90s. But then the slate came and it showed people, you know, how great it is to ride gravel with a suspension fork. And now we have all these great options like the Fox 32 Tapercast, the RockShox Rudy, the Lauf Grit SL, you've got Future Shock. You've got so many options and it's all thanks to the Slate. Now the second innovation that the Slate introduced is arguably even more important than the Lefty. And it probably had a more lasting effect and that's 650B wheels and tires. Now, it's not a new wheel size, you know, it's been around and randonneuring riders have experimented with it and it had kind of a cult following, but it wasn't mainstream. And with the slate, Cannondale actually had to go to Panaracer and have them custom make OE tires for the slate because there just weren't any good gravel options in this size. You know, it's interesting, you know, I've done a few little like left rights and it's kind of an agile feeling bike. You know, compared to my uh, 700C gravel bike, it feels a little more, a little more dirty, you know, a little more like a road bike. It's kind of cool, very sporty. And the whole idea behind the 650B wheel size is that you get this wide, high volume tire that gives you more comfort and more traction. But the overall diameter of the wheel and tire combo is about the same as a 700C wheel with a road tire. So you still get some agile handling, snappy acceleration. The original Panaracer tires, they weren't the greatest tires for gravel. They were fully slick, they had no knobs. But fortunately, because the slate introduced this and made it sort of a mainstream thing, you have a ton of 650B tire options now, like these Renee Hurst Pumpkin Ridge tires. They had got these big knobs, which they're not super fast on pavement, but when you really need them, they bite in and they're fantastic. And also, we have gravel bikes, new gravel bikes that are designed to switch between 700C and 650B tires. And that is all because of the groundwork that the slate laid. And I think it's safe to say with these two innovations, the Lefty Fork and the 650B wheels and tires, that the slate made gravel more plush. But wait, is it actually more plush? I hear all of you in the peanut gallery. That was a sweet number. It sure was. You know something else? What? I hate sweet numbers. <laughs> uh, it's aluminum, it's so harsh, you can't ride gravel wrong. Cannondale, they are the aluminum masters. They have been doing their CAD series of bikes since the 90s, they know how to make a great aluminum bike that rides well. Have you ever seen the CAD 12? One of the best aluminum bikes ever made. And the Slate actually shares a lot of the tube profiles with the CAD 12. And one of those is the Delta seat tube. Now this seat tube, it's wider at the ends for stiffness, but then it narrows in the middle for compliance. And the same thing happens with these seat stays and chain stays. They use this thin wall tubing that is 
you know, sort of flattened in the middle so that it can flex and absorb bumps and vibration. And the end result is an aluminum frame that is actually surprisingly comfortable. I'd say if I was blindfolded and wearing earplugs, I probably would never tell that I was riding aluminum. I would think it was carbon. The one thing I kind of don't like about this aluminum frame, it uses a BB30 bottom bracket. Now it's not surprising, Cannondale invented BB30. Of course they're gonna use it. What is interesting though, is that this isn't a normal BB30 bottom bracket. It's called BB30A. And what it is, is instead of a 68 millimeter bottom bracket, it's 73 millimeters wide, like a mountain bike bottom bracket. And what's interesting is that that five millimeters, that extra five millimeters is all on the drive side. So it's asymmetric, which is what the A stands for. Now Cannondale says the reason for this is that it's wider, so obviously it's stiffer, and also allows them to use these super short 405 millimeter chain stays. Now these short chain stays, they really help the slate be super agile. The one really good thing about this bottom bracket though is that it lets you run Cannondale's hologram cranks. Well, these aren't them, these are the budget version but hologram cranks are stamped aluminum and they're hollow and they're some of the lightest and stiffest cranks you can get. The original slate, it came with an anodized purple version of the hologram cranks, which I thought were really cool and they really gave the bike this 90s mountain bike vibe. But you know what isn't very 90s mountain bike is this 11 speed force one by drivetrain. Now this is actually the same drivetrain that Ted King rode when he won Unbound Gravel. Main difference between his setup and mine though is he had a uh, 44 tooth chain ring. Mine is a 40, you know. Ted's a world tour, former world tour pro. He's maybe a little stronger. Come on! Come on. Come on. Come on. Right, maybe. Um, but in a world where you have 12 speed, wireless, electronic drivetrains, it might seem a little outdated, but it's kind of elegant in its simplicity. And honestly, for the majority of gravel riders, this is perfect. It is more than enough. It gets the job done. So this 2019 model was one of the last examples before Cannondale killed it off and replaced it with a new flagship gravel bike, the Topstone Carbon. So unfortunately, this bike it will be missed. I will miss you so much. Good night, sweet prince. No, they will never take you away because we are going to be together forever. Hey, look at me. Look at me. You're beautiful. Shush, shush, shush. They'll never take you away from me. But you know what? It lives on in the used marketplace. You can find this bike and more at theprosecloset.com. And you know what? I want to hear what you think about the Cannondale Slate. Do you like it? Would you ride it? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. I'm gonna ride the shit out of this bike.